shit, Sam shit, Sam shit. Sam shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's come to our <laughs> <coughs> Hello, uh, expansion for transformation. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have gathered for a policy debate on the motion. This house would require all Korean students to learn a third language. As the first speaker of our team, I will short, shortly define some of, some ambiguous terms in the motion. The term Korean students means students who are in the stage of oblig obligatory education system, meaning elementary school to mi middle school students, and who attend Korean public schools. And third language means any language spoken other than the mother tongue and your second language. And required means needed or made necessary by law. And <clears throat> now as first speaker, I will present our policy. Then I'll elaborate on the indisputable need for this policy. And our next speaker, Min Young, will talk about the policy's practicality and its benefits. Lastly, our last speaker, Dongyi, will make some important rebuttals and some of our points. Now that the overview is clear, <coughs> I will introduce you to our policy. This house would enforce the government to make a compulsory law to require all primary to junior students to learn a third language. In other, words, in other words, all students will be required to learn a third language until the age of 14, mandatorily. <coughs> Our policy is to expand a current one that already exists to teach third languages to students in junior colleges. We'll expand the <coughs> current existing program to start at the age of seven, which would be primary school year one. The teaching hours will be extremely short but consistent. And during primary years, the course will be based on introducing the language along with the culture, not about complicated usage and heavy vocabulary, and mainly focus on the elementary listening and speaking of the language. The students' evaluations will be based on their performance in classes, focusing on in-class work. Schools will be offered the choice between two languages, Chinese and Spanish, which are both globally important and widely spoken. However, as one of the goals in suggesting this policy is to alleviate our stance in international community and to follow the wave of globalization, so the government will encourage students to teach Chinese by subsidizing most of the money that governments can provide. However, this does not mean that we won't support Spanish at all because we'll provide the subsidy at the ratio of 73 Chinese to Spanish. Now, after all, students under senior college from the age of 15, the students can make a choice, either to carry on or to drop the course. I'll start. What? <laughs> <laughs> What's the point of educating them in middle school if they're going to forget them in high school anyway? Well, it's better to learn at a young age anyway because a lot of you have been <coughs> abroad and you'll definitely feel that languages are better learned when you're younger. And now that I explained the policy through thoroughly enough, I will now tell you why this policy is inevitably necessary to all Korean students. First, we all have to acknowledge the fact that the U.S.'s near ultimate grasp of the world will not last long and will soon succumb to sporadically growing nations. The best candidate for this nation is China. And as a reaction for this expected change, many Koreans are already learning third language like Chinese and with English as a given. And at this pace, English will become a basic skill for mo most Koreans. So being fluent in English will not be something that is valued and rather taken as granted. And looking at China's expeditious growth rate, it can be reasonably assumed that <coughs> Chinese will rise up to the place of English today. And a striking, a striking example that shows this well lies in the Korean official exams. In order to become, become a grade 9 official, there were originally two primi primary methods, through the normal exam or by taking a spe special English exam and entering as an English specialist. But since 2004, another route has been opened as where a person can come in as a Chinese specialist. Other jobs than officials are also on the trend of opening the way for Chinese speakers, such as tour guides and etc. And more and more life opportunities are requiring something else than English that everyone is becoming capable of. This is the fixed fate of globalization, and Korea has a desperate need to follow the global mainstream. Second, Korea has the responsibility to join in globalization. Korea today is a ra rather high-ranking nation compared to the rest of the world. Korea plays eighth on eighth on economic growth, tenth on GDP, and seventh on military spendings, and fifth on military defense. Korea is becoming a leading nation, but it is an impossible goal if 
Korea doesn't join in the globalization. And, <clears throat> but effective globalization will not be possible with just English in the future. What about the 1.5 billion people who use Chinese, or the 400 million people in over 20 nations who use Spanish? English just won't do it anymore. Without their languages, Korea will only plummet to the bottom of the global pyramid. In order to pro properly cope with the wind of globalization, learning a third language is not just important for the students themselves, but also for the very future of the Republic of Korea. Mm. <coughs> that is all I have to say as a first speaker. And <coughs> vote for prop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a clear context of today's debate, let me do so. In other countries, this would be a second language education debate. Yet, this debate is about third language education because in the case of Korea, English as a second language is already mandatory. Also, because this debate has been set in Korea by the motion, we must consider its demographic features in considering the proposition's policy. Having cleaned up the debate, the opposition will not allow the proposition to compromise education, applying whimsical and unrealistic methods. Ladies and gentlemen, quality, not quantity. The proposition policy spreads Korea's resources thin by supposedly providing third language education to all Korean students. This is not how it should be done. We should seek quality. If we are to provide third language education, we should focus on quality. This is the foundation of our alternative. Before proceeding into rebuttals, let us provide our alternative. Instead of requiring all students to do so, we will create schools specialized in English, specialized in language be developed to substitute for the third language requirement. The school curriculum will be from seventh grade to 12th grade. Third language education will be allocated during other selective subject periods such as computer ap applications. Classes from seventh to ninth grade will consist of one hour basic conversation classes per week and another for standard basics. Classes from 10th to 12th grade will consist of the same curriculum with the addition of reading and writing classes, one for each, one of each per week. Okay, Exams will be taken just like other, other subjects, and students can choose to record these third languages as their selective subjects during national exams. There will be one school for each province, and students will be able to go, able to, go to the school in that province only. All of these schools will be government subsidiaries, and thus, measures to guarantee equality will be taken. To make a rebuttal, um, the first speaker, the prime minister, said that the Educa education all students will, with the third language in this era of globalization, globalization is necessary. Yet, not all students will engage in that area of vocation. We're talking about languages other than English. They're not in demand. However, even if they are in demand, can public education provide the skills needed to use that language as a skill? No. We cannot even provide English at, their le at that level. Follow in following on in my speech, I will give you a statistic that shows that our that below that we are below tenth of TOEFL scores. Again, quality, not quantity. We oppose this motion and support our alternative for three very clear reasons: prioritization, specialization, okay. initiation. I, the first speaker, will deal with the first, and the second speaker will deal with the rest. Moving on to our first argument, prioritization. The proposition would spread our already lacking budget upon third language education for the whole country. Korea, 
Despite its rigorous and supposed English obsession, ranks low in standardized English tests. Korea ranked 19 out of 20 on the IELTS, International English Language Testing System, set by Cambridge. In the terms of IBT scores, Korea ranked 111. This is sacrificing quality for quantity. Korea cannot even supply a sufficient second language education. How can it expand its resources to all of these schools to provide a third language education? This spreads the resources to thin while our policy prioritizes other areas and also inputs the minimum amount of resources by specializing, as our deputy will explain. The proposition will have to access if the same budget that is currently providing the defective English education in other areas of learning. Korea <coughs> must prioritize and invest its resources in areas that are currently obviously lacking, such as English. Also, if it has any money left, it must invest its high school budget in making schools better as a whole and perhaps in other subjects. Furthermore, our policy concentrates resources so even if we were to work with the same budget, our policy would be far more effective. On the bottom line, we have a proposition that is willing to compromise the ed whole education system for their quantity-based policy. Our policy prioritizes. So, please remember, quality, not quantity. by the opposition team and then move on to the practicality and the benefit of our policy. First, I'll rebut the claims made by the opposition team. The opposition team said that quality must be considered over quantity. So they're basically saying that we must focus more on English. However, they have proved us that we must, ha we must shift our way of thinking. Other countries such as England, France, and New Zealand are teaching another language other than English. Although it is not a problem today, um, the competition will be leveled as our children grow up when they face other, other international students who are capable of both English and other foreign languages. Another language, is, another language other than English is a must for these students. And also, English linguist David Brattle said that there, is, uh, there isn't a com competitive advantage anymore in English. Also, public education is not to score the TOEFL or TOEFL and su such private private tests. So, I think they're getting something wrong wrong here too. Oh, um, also, when students compete against each other to go into language school, this will be a lot. This will cause a lot of problem, since these students will then go to Hagwons to prepare for the language school and so on. So, so now that I've rebutted the arguments made by the opposition team, let me further elaborate on the practicality and the benefit of our policy. Our policy is a very feasible plan for three reasons. It would mean a mere, mere expansion and be easily agreed upon parents and students and have enough supply of teachers. <coughs> First, our policy would mean a mere expansion because numerous schools are already having third language courses independently. According to the seventh revision in national curriculum, elementary school students are having two hours, and middle school students are having four hours of independent courses that the school chooses to have. Among the options, there are third language courses as well, and many schools are choosing to offer third language courses. Because we're not starting something totally new, it would have a higher, higher probability, probability of gaining success. Also, as our compulsory course is an introductory course and would focus on motivating our, 
and motivating students to continue their learning through intensified selective courses in secondary school, there won't be much academic burden for the students. According to a Times article, the majority of students in 1,400 primary schools that had French, French compulsory courses say that they were actually, they were actually um, satisfied with the courses and that they wish to continue with the selective course in the secondary school. Hence, the parents and students will easily agree on the policy. Moreover, since our policy would only focus on two widely spoken foreign languages other than English, which are Chinese and Spanish, there would be enough supply of, te supply of teachers. Now. now, now I'll show how our policy is also beneficial for our students. Our policy is beneficial because students can easily pick up the language in, with the early education, and it would set an open mind for the students. Uh, language is boost for youngsters. This is not a, this is not a hypothesis anymore. It is a proven statement, uh, proven statement uh, scientifically. According to a Telegraph article, language become more difficult as we age because the part of our brain that differentiates small sounds become weaker as we age. So the students will be able to easily pick up language with early com early compulsory courses. Also, since we, we will offer culture education as, as well, we will be able to nur nurture an open mind, which is necessary quality for global leaders in the society. So in the long term, our policy would be adequate in improving our global stance by forming future global leaders. Um, until, until now, I have rebutted the claims made by the opposition team and, and presented the practicality and the benefit of our team's policy. Think, think rationally and judge what is for the sake of our own students. And then you will, you will find out that our policy is the answer to our students' future. Go through the proposition. Thank you. After this speech, we'll hear from two of you for four speeches. So again, think about what you'd say for either side. Let's welcome the second speaker for the opposition side, Trey. Trey. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before I start, I would like to say quality not quantitative. <laughs> now, first of all, as the deputy leader of the opposition, I would like to rebut some of the arguments made by the proposition. Now, these, they said that they will, students will have to learn a third language when, from when they're seven. But ours is different. We will concentrate from seventh grade to twelfth grade, and they can remember the language much better. And they won't, students that started from seven years old won't remember anything. Also, England has been dropping its mandatory language program because they, their students didn't like it. And they had problems and dealing with the workload. And the students getting in, it's not a problem. And the proposition has failed to prove this point. And the current schools are not doing their curriculums based on our policy. Now, I would like to move on to our Substantives, which are specialization and initiation. No, thank you. Now, the proposition's policy spreads our limited resources thin. Providing the resources that are required for all of the students in Korea is beyond our reach. In addition, there are too many schools and too many students dispersed in a wide area, and the government simply cannot provide for all of those schools. As for 2007, there were 2,159 high schools with 1,840,000 students. And there were 33,032 3, middle schools with 2,060,000 students in Korea. Can the proposition provide for all of these students? Not to mention the 5,756 elementary schools with 3,830,000 students. 
The government is not an ATM that spits out money <laughs> for the frivolous and unrealistic policy that the proposition is suggesting to us. Our policy is far more realistic because we do not Choice focus sir. on quality but quantity. Yes. Oh, do you not realize the government and schools are already spending money on um, third language education and that we only have to expand the current existing one? <laughs> well, what I'm saying is that we have to focus the... I was going to point out that out later, but... I'm saying that we have to focus the language requirements to only nine schools in each province. That will be placed in each province. By concentrating our resources, we can provide real quality foreign language education to students. Also, focusing on nine schools is not an unrealistic plan, considering the fact that the Ministry of Education, Science, and Technology has set aside a three, thir, 307 billion won for foreign language and uh, foreign international education. This is a budget that the proposition has no access to because the proposition's policy will have to work under, under the general school budget because it is mandatory for all schools. It is a known fact that the government's budget is, has already been spread out thinly. The proposition cannot possibly suggest promoting their policy while having schools in rural areas that have failed to succeed the, successfully educating their students in a second language. Also, by specializing, we can provide a sufficient third language education to selected students, and the government can concentrate its resources only on nine schools. Furthermore, other students who are not, other school students do not have to be burdened by the third language that they have absolutely no interest in. Not only does our alternative <coughs> alleviate the burden, but also it does what the proposition is seeking to do, only better. Now before I move on to initiation, which is our third sub substantive, I would like to point out another defect of the proposition's policy. The proposition will have to provide for all the schools that they have defined which make it much harder for them to initiate their policy, thus impractical. Where are they going to get all of these teachers? Where is the money for all the textbooks, teachers, and other resources going to come from? Their policy will fall apart even before it, they initiate it. Our policy is much easier to implement. We only initiate this policy upon nine schools, and our acquisition of teachers, textbooks, and other resources will be much easier. Also, because we have a different budget the 307 billion won set aside by the Ministry of Education, <clears throat> we'll have more room to initiate our policy. Therefore, our policy is much more realistic. To sum it all up, our alternative stands above the proposition's policy for two main reasons, specialization and initiation. Our policy focuses on quality and thus concentrates resources not only does our policy out output better results, but it also makes use of the limited budget wisely. Also, our policy is far easier to initiate, again, it fo because, again, it focuses on resources, while the proposition spreads its thing. So again, ladies and gentlemen, quality, not quantity. Thank you.
No, no, no. to learn the third language and learning the third language may degrade um, Korean skills of Korean students and also um, we have um, we lack money um, and also requiring the, the Korean students to learn a third language is ineffective because all the students uh, I mean students do not, uh, there are students who do not want to learn a third language and what about the students who do not, uh, who want to learn language other than Chinese and Spanish? Um, it's a waste of resources to make them learn Chinese um, third language, I think. Okay, okay. No reason, sir. Okay. Thank you to both of our floor speakers. You wow. you Let's welcome uh, the final speaker for the opposition side, Yu Jiwon. Yu Jiwon. Yu Jiwon. Again, again, ladies and gentlemen, as we have said enough times, quality, not quantity. Having heard our, our line, let us see what the proposition has for us. Apparently, they focus on expansion. But I would like to state that this supposed expansion is a cheap excuse to just say that we're growing global leaders. Is the proposition's policy sufficient enough to grow the global leaders that they supposedly state? I'll prove that our alternative stands higher than their policy upon three levels, on the status quo, practicality, and benefit. So let's proceed with the status quo. The basic premise that the proposition is making is that all subjects are doing fine and that we can, we can impose these third language educations because we can. But the fact is, we can't. Just as our leader of opposition stated, we ranked 111th in, in, in the TOEFL test and the 19th out of 20 in the ILTS. Apparently, we're notorious for investing so much in our English education. And this is all we have, ladies and gentlemen. And yet, they are suggesting that we implement an education on another foreign language on all of these schools. Also, by spreading the resources thin, not only are we overloading these children with an inadequate supply of foreign language education, we're actually making the quality of other educations go down. Now, let us see a hypothetical situation when you have your finals. You have every single subject but 
Now you have one more to study, and sadly, it's a language. This is what is going to happen if the proposition policy is initiated. But, no thank you ma'am, our policy is different because we specialize in these nine special schools for each province. And that we make sure that not all students are burdened with this language. And that we concentrate our resources on these students, which goes into practicality. Can the proposition provide all of these Chinese and Spanish teachers to these 11,000 schools by their definition that they have to provide? No, ladies and gentlemen. So what is going to happen? If we initiate their policy without having the correct resources, we're going to have inadequate teachers. Teachers that can't teach a language but are teaching it for the sake of their jobs and for the sake of pursuing the proposition's ridiculous policy. Also, there are other resources and teachers that we have to think about. For example, textbooks. It takes money to make them and also give them out to the students. Now, because our policy is specialization, we concentrate our resources into a few schools. And that is why we can make sure that we don't need so many teachers and that we don't need so much money. Now, upon initiation of our practicality, now they will state, they stated that they will make the policy initiated since the age of seven. In the age of seven, when you just enter elementary school, you have to learn Korean, English, and Chinese. What is going to happen? We're going to have kids say ni hao to their English teachers. We're going to have kids saying I'm fine, thank you, and you to their Korean mothers. And hell knows what they're going to say to their Chinese teachers, ladies and gentlemen. Confusion, confusion, confusion. That is what the proficient policy does. Our policy begins at seventh grade when these, te when these students are capable of processing these languages. And then we pursue it to twelfth grade to make sure that they acquire the languages as their own. Which brings us to benefits. Now, again, because we concentrate and because we specialize in these nine schools, all the resources that the proposition will be wasting will be implemented in these students so they will learn the language better. And it will be us, not the proposition, that will be growing real global leaders. We'll be able to make sure that these students learn the language, make it as their own, and are able to use it as their tools and perhaps diplomats and other seats in our international, international community. Also, because they will learn the language and not forget. Now, they mentioned the example of the United Kingdom that other countries are initiating policies such as these. But what they did not mention that in the case of the United Kingdom, that they are actually dropping their mandatory education because it's not working. So, ladies and gentlemen, today, if you stood for prioritizing, if you stood for specializing, and if you stood for initiating a correct policy, vote for the opposition. And again, quality, not quantity. Thank you. And the final speaker of this debate, and the final speaker for the proposition side, is Che Dongyi. Expansion for transformation. What we're offering to the students, the proposition, is an open set of options for the students, given to the students. And that's what this policy offers, and that's what the students will get once the policy will, is implemented. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Donna Che, the last speaker of this debate. And um, I'd, like to, I'd like you to think my, my speech as a book. And I'll have two chapters in my book. <laughs> First, the rebuttals, that has been, um, the rebuttals of the points that has been made by the last speaker of the opposition. And second, the clashes that took place in today's debate. Um, having said that, let me move on to my first chapter, <laughs> which is the rebuttals. The, prop the opposition today has given us um, some clear points, um, especially on the set of language schools um, and the impracticality that stands in our policy. However, um, the proposition, and I believe that this does not stand. The first, the, the first the set up of language schools. Take for example Dewan, ladies and gentlemen. We are special language schools set up for special purposes. However, I see a student there who learns chemistry, 
is planning on uh, majoring in chemistry in, in further. And I see a student who wishes to be uh, um, not a lawyer but a doctor in the future. Do we need languages specifically in becoming a doctor or in becoming uh, in, in majoring in chemistry? No. That proves, proves us to the ladies and gentlemen that we're not here for learning languages. We're here for prestigious education, schools, not for languages. Therefore, um, the proposition oh, believes that, no, the proposition believes that setting up these language schools um, that will not fulfill the purpose of teaching languages. The, the mothers and par the parents and the students will urge to go to these language schools, they so, so, they so call, uh, one for each province. Oh, no. No. Um, and this will thrive private education. And the proposition reached a conclusion that if the students will pay their money to go to private institutions to learn Chinese, Spanish, and the French, why not? Why don't we just implant the system to the public schools so that they can save their time, money, and money? Oh, no. Um, no, thank you. Also, um, they have, they have also said that this will burden the students academically. Therefore, the students um, would not like it because they will have another, another subject to study. However, um, they need to listen to what we say because the prime minister of propositions clearly stated that the evaluation of students will be based on their in-class performances. Uh, um, having said that, let me move on to the clashes that took place in today's debate. The biggest clash that took place in today's debate was English education, whether it's um, prominent, whether it's useful. However, the proposition has a uh, has the has a quote unquote the um, from the Ministry of Education saying that Korea's English education goal was to was to make um, our people to be capable of communicating with foreigners, with basic skills. They were not aiming for scoring in IELTS and TOEFL, because not everyone is, as they have stated, not everyone's, everyone's vocation will be on um, business English and so on. Therefore, um, and since we see an urgent need of teaching third languages to students, due to our banishing stance in international community, we believe that there, uh, there's a room for teaching third languages. And therefore, we have to, by implanting, all, implanting, implanting the system to the schools. <coughs> Before I'm um, wrapping up my speech, I'd like to question something. Ladies and gentlemen, what is education? Is it something that we forget after graduating high schools? Is it something that we resent? No. Education is something that affects our lifetime. And education, uh, therefore, we believe that um, students deserve the right to learn third languages with introductory courses and fun interest. Therefore, I um, need to vote for proposition. Thank you.